Okay, carrying on with part two. John 6.30 They said, What sign can you give us to see, so that we may believe you? What is the work you do? Our ancestors had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered you, I tell you this, the truth is, not that Moses gave you the bread from heaven, but that my Father gives you the real bread from heaven. The bread that God gives comes down from heaven and it brings life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread now and always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never be hungry, and whoever believes in me shall never be thirsty. But you, as I have said, do not believe, although I, although you have seen. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the man who comes to me I will never turn away. So here at this point here, Yeshua is channeling. He's now channeling a... Now, I've sometimes thought he's channeling the one love. Or he's channeling the Father. He's not speaking to them as the man. He's speaking to them as the Spirit. So, to me, I consider that to be like the one love. Now, it's interesting, he says here, it's the Father who does the bread, the food. So then would the mother be the drink? Anyway, I, whether those analogies pan up, it's um, there's a lot more that's going to be said, so I'm going to carry on. I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So he's saying here, I have come down from heaven. So, you know, is, you know, did he always say that? Or was this after he was born again in the Spirit? So it's, it's the Spirit. It's that Spirit talking. What his aim is, is to teach that, you know, you're not just the physical body. That there's more than that. I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So it's God's plan. It is his will that I should not lose even one of all that he has given me, but raise them all up on the last day. So now is he talking about um, just his 12 disciples? Well, if he was, then he was wrong, wasn't he? Because one of them faltered. So then... Is he talking about everybody? So it's it's the one it's the one love. It's it's this Christ thing. It's this anointing. It's this job from God. He's got a purpose. For it is my Father's will that everyone who looks upon the Son and puts his faith in Him shall possess eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So it's for everyone, that's clear. At this the Jews began to murmur disapprovingly, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They said, surely this is Yeshua, son of Joseph. We know his father and mother. How can he now say, I have now come down from heaven? Yeshua answered, stop murmuring among yourselves. No man can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me. So when he's saying, come to me, he's almost, he is saying, isn't he? Because he does say, I am the way, I am the light. So it is that he's channeling. <clears throat> Verse 
No man can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. I do not mean that anyone has seen the Father. He who has come from God has seen the Father, and he alone. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, the believer possesses eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, and they are dead. I am speaking of the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and never die. I am that living bread, which has come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. Moreover, the bread which I will give is my own flesh. I give it for the life of the world. This led to a fierce dispute among the Jews. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, In truth, in very truth, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you can have no life in you. <laughs> so this is something he repeats later. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. It's interpreted differently when when we come to it later and he says it like three times in a row but slightly differently each time it does sort of seem to suggest be in God and have God in you and reality is we are in God we are in God and we have the one love within us as well as souls we have that within us, and God would lead you to that. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses eternal life. Is it because, you know, this, this is your sustenance, this is, this is what you are, this is where you are in the universe. You know, you, we're still suckling of God, we're still in our infancy. And I will raise him up on the last day. And this last day, this is very much individual to everybody. Everybody will have their judgment day. So in a sense, everybody will have the last day before they knew they were an eternal being. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells continu continually in me, and I dwell in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who, e he who eats me shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, and it is not like the bread which our fathers ate. They are dead, but whoever eats this bread shall live forever. You know, so it's easy to misconstrue, and maybe there's some errors in the translation here. Because it sounds like here he is saying, you know, that you there is something out there you could eat and it would make your physical body live forever. To say that those who ate the bread in the desert are now dead... Well, yeah, their bodies are dead, but their their life force is still continuing in some other way, as we all are. So, you know, he's he he's not talking about something literal, but it's this, you know, to get to get some love from God in you is like a nourishment, is like a food, it keeps it keeps you going, makes you happy. This was spoken in synagogue when Jesus, when Yeshua was teaching in Capernaum. Many of his disciples on hearing it exclaimed, 
This is more than we can stomach. Why listen to such talk? Yeshua was aware that his disciples were murmuring about it and asked them, Does this shock you? What if you see the Son of Man ascending to the place where he was before? The Spirit alone gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words which I have spoken to you are both spirit and life. And yet there are some of you who have no faith. For Yeshua knew all along who were without faith and who was to betray him. So he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father. From that time on, many of his disciples withdrew and no longer went about with him. So Yeshua asked the twelve, Do you also want to leave me? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Your words are words of eternal life. We have faith, and we know that you are the Holy One of God. Yeshua answered, Have I not chosen you, all twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. He it was who would betray him, and he was one of the twelve. Afterwards Jesus, Yeshua went about in Galilee. He wished to avoid Judea, because the Jews were looking for a chance to kill him. As the Jewish feast of tabernacles was close at hand, his brothers said to him, You should leave that, this district and go into Judea, so that your disciples there may see the great things you are doing. Surely no one can hope to be in the public eye if he works in seclusion. If you really are doing such things as these, show yourself to the world, for even his brothers had no faith in him. Yeshua said to them, The right time for me has not yet come, but any time is right for you. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me for exposing the wickedness of its ways. Go to the festival yourselves. I am not going up to this festival, because the right time for me has not yet come. With this answer he stayed behind in Galilee. Later when his brothers had gone to the festival, he went up himself, not publicly, but almost in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and asking, Where is he? And there was much whispering about him in the crowds. He is a good man, some said some. No, said others. He is leading the people astray. However, no one talked about him openly for fear of the Jews. When the festival was already half over, Yeshua went up to the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished. How is it, they said, that this untrained man has such learning? Yeshua replied, The teaching that I give is not my own. It is the teaching of him who sent me. Whoever has the will to do the will of God shall know whether my teaching comes from him or is merely my own. Anyone whose teaching is merely his own aims at, aims at honour for himself. But if a man aims at the honour of him who sent him, he is sincere, and there is nothing false in him. Did, Moses give you the, did not Moses give you the law, yet you all break it? Why are you trying to kill me? The crowd answered, You are possessed. Who wants to kill you? Jesus, Yeshua replied, Once only have I done work on the Sabbath, and you are all taken aback. But consider, Moses gave you the law of circumcision, not that it originated with Moses, but with the patriarchs, and you circumcise on the Sabbath. Well then, if a child is circumcised on the Sabbath to avoid breaking the law of Moses, why are you indignant with me for giving health on the Sabbath to the whole of a man's body? Do not judge superficially, but be just in your judgments. At this, some of the people of Jerusalem began to say, Is not this the man they want to put to death? And here he is, speaking openly and they have not a word to say to him. Can it be that our rulers have actually decided that this is the Messiah, and yet we know where this man comes from? But when the Messiah appears, no one is to know where he comes from. 
Thereupon Yeshua cried aloud as he taught in the temple, No doubt you know me, no doubt you know where I come from, yet I have not come of my own accord. I was sent by the one who truly is, and him you do not know. I know him because I come from him, and he it is who sent me. At this they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because his appointed hour had not yet come. Yet among the people many believed in him. When the Messiah comes, they said, is it likely that he will perform more signs than this man? The Pharisees overheard these mutterings of the people about him, so the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Then Yeshua said, For a little longer I shall be with you, then I am going away to him who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. So the Jews said to one another, Where does he intend to go that we should not be able to find him? Will he go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What did he mean by saying, You will look for me, but you will not find me? Where I am, you cannot come. <coughs> On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and cried aloud, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. Whoever believes in me, let him drink. As scripture says, Streams of living water shall flow out from within him. He was speaking of the Spirit which believers in him would receive later, for the Spirit had not yet been given, because Yeshua had not yet been glorified. On hearing this, some of the people said, This must certainly be the expected prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. Others again, Surely the Messiah is not to come from Galilee. Does not scripture say that the Messiah is to be of the family of David, from David's village of Bethlehem? Thus he caused a spilt among the people, a split. Some were seizing him. Some were for seizing him, but no one laid hands on him. The temple police came back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked, Why have you not brought him? No man, they answered, ever spoke as this man speaks, the Pharisees retorted. Have you been misled? Is there a single one of our rulers who has believed in him, or of the Pharisees? As for this rabble, which cares for nothing for the law, a curse is on them. Then one of their number, Nicodemus, the man who had once visited Yeshua, intervened. Does our law, he asked them, permit us to pass judgment on a man unless we have first given him a hearing and learned the facts? Are you a Galilean too, they retorted. Study the scriptures and you will find that prophets do not come from Galilee. Once again, Yeshua addressed the people. I am the light of the world. No follower of mine shall wander in the dark. He shall have the light of life. The Pharisees said to him, You are witness in your own cause. Your testimony is not valid. Yeshua replied, My testimony is valid, even though I do bear witness about myself, because I know where I come from and where I am going. You do not know either where I come from or where I am going. You judge by worldly standards. I pass judgment on no man. But if I do judge, my judgment is valid, because it is not I alone who judge, but I and he who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. Here am I, a witness in my own cause, and my other witness is the Father who sent me. They asked, Where is your father? Yeshua replied, you know neither me nor my father, and if you knew me, you would know my father as well. These words were spoken by Yeshua in the treasury as he taught in the temple, yet no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Again he said to them, I am going away, you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. The Jews then said, Perhaps he will kill himself. Is that what he means when he says, Where I am going you cannot come? So Yeshua continued, 
You belong to this world below, I to the world above. Your home is in this world, mine is not. That is why I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe what I, that I am what I am, you will die in your sins. They asked him, Who are you? Yes, you answered. Why should I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you, and in judgment. But he who sent me speaks the truth, and what I heard from him I report to the world. They did not understand that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Yeshua said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will know that I am what I am. I do nothing on my own authority, but in all that I say, I have been taught by my Father. He who sent me is present with me, and has not left me alone, for I always do what is acceptable to him. As he has said this, many put their faith in him. Turning to the Jews who had believed him, Yeshua said, If you dwell within the revelation that I have brought, you are indeed my disciples. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They replied, We are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in slavery to any man. What do you mean by saying, You will become free men? In very truth, I tell you, said Yeshua, that everyone who commits sin is a slave. The slave has no permanent standing in the household, but the son belongs to it forever. If then the son sets you free, you will indeed be free. I know that you are descended from Abraham, but you are bent on killing me because my teacher makes no headway with you. I am revealing in words what I saw in my father's presence and you are revealing in action what you learned from your father. They retorted, Abraham is our father. If you were Abraham's children, Yeshua replied, you would do as Abraham did. As it is, you are bent on killing me, a man who told you the truth, as I heard it from God. That is not how Abraham acted. You are doing your own father's work. They said, We are not base-born. God is our Father, and God alone. Yeshua said, If God were your Father, you would love me, for God is the source of my being, and from him I come. I have not come of my own accord. He sent me. Why do you not understand my language? It is because my revelation is beyond your grasp. Your Father is the devil, and you choose to carry out your Father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and it is not rooted in the truth. There is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he is speaking his own language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But I speak the truth, and therefore you do not believe me. Which of you can prove me in the wrong? If what I say is true, why do you not believe me? He who has God for his father listens to the words of God. You are not God's children. That is why you do not listen. Okay, so, so when they said, you know, they said, we are not base born, God is our father. They are right, but Yeshua can obviously feel in their spirit that they, they are also confused. They don't know who their father is. They think their father is Yahweh, or Moses, or Abraham. So, so yeah, that's why he said that. That's why they're not God's children, because they don't, they're looking at the wrong father. Even though truly everyone's got a soul, it's there, the potential at one point will be awakened and so forth. The Jews answered, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and that you are possessed? I am not possessed, said Yeshua. I am honouring my father, but you dishonour me. I do not care about my own glory. There is one who does care, and he is judge. In very truth, I tell you, 
If anyone obeys my teaching, he shall never know what it is to die. Because if you if you absolutely know about uh, your where your soul exists and everything, then um, long before you die, you will you will understand that um, you know you you've got somewhere else to go, and you, therefore you, the sting of death of thinking shit I'm going to cease to exist won't happen because you won't feel like you're going to cease to exist. The Jews said. Now we are certain that you are possessed. Abraham is dead, the prophets are dead, and yet you say, If anyone obeys my teaching, he shall not know what it is to die. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? The prophets are dead too. What do you claim to be? Yeshua replied, If I glorify myself, that glory of mine is worthless. It is the Father who glorifies me. He of whom you say, He is our God, though you do not know him, but I know him. If I said that I did not know him, I should be a liar like you. But in truth, I know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham was overjoyed to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews protested. You are not yet fifty years old. How can you, how can you have seen Abraham? Yeshua said, In very truth I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. They picked up stones to throw at him, but Yeshua was not to be seen, and he left the temple. So he's being, um, I think he's being controversial, isn't he? He's, but he's, you know, again channeling. He's, he's channeling that, that, that spirit. As he went on his way, Yeshua saw a man blind from his birth, and his disciples put the question, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? Why was he born blind? It is, n it is not that this man or his parents sinned. Yeshua answered. He was born blind so that God's power might be displayed in curing him. Here we go. So we're talking about fate, aren't we? We're talking about destiny. You know, he's looking at this as this is the destiny. If they got to that village and there wasn't a blind man there, he couldn't demonstrate what he's about to do, which he was ready to do. While daylight lasts, we must carry on the work of him who sent me. Night comes when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So these things could only work while he was in the world. With these words, he spat on the ground and made a paste with the spittle. He spread it on the man's eyes and said to him, Go and wash it in the pool of Siloam. The name means scent. The man... Uh, right. Sorry, should I stop it? Let's start again. Sorry, I can't bother. Hello? Oh. Yeah. 